What's going on everybody? Dylan here with Espresso Outlet. Today we are going to be covering what it's like in prepping for a mobile coffee business. So uh, we've been getting quite a bit of comments asking us how difficult it is to prep, what do I do to prep uh, for my coffee events. So I'm gonna bring you through uh, prepping for Brewhead Espresso. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe as it does help our channel grow to reach more coffee lovers out there. So I will meet you outside at the truck. Let's go. So first things first, first thing that I like to do is make sure that my truck is filled with gas no matter what. Um, I just like to top it off no matter where I'm at, uh, depending on how far the event is, I'll still do so just because it is nice just to have a full tank of gas, uh, just in case something were to happen. Um, next, I will go, I actually keep the generators in the back of the truck, which I will show you. Um, I actually am still recovering from a fractured wrist, so I have been leaving the generators in the back of my truck uh, for now, uh, just because it is harder to lift in and out as they are pretty heavy. Uh, the next thing that I would do is uh, check the back of the truck for the hitch. Sometimes I take it off, sometimes I keep it on. I have been leaving it on, so I know that it's back there, but I always just check just to make sure uh, it can never be too safe. So we're gonna go back and talk about the hitch here, and I'll tell you, and I'll kind of explain why I went with the hitch that I went with. It's a pretty basic hitch. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive just because uh, you can change the level of where the hitch is. So the nice thing is it does have these locking pins on the side, um, and it's also got, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a little locking mechanism here to where it just kind of keeps it to where somebody can't just undo the pin and take your hitch. Uh, they can cut it off and they can obviously use the key if they had it, which hopefully they don't have it. Um, but the nice thing is with this hitch, especially because my truck is lifted um, two inches uh, in the back and in the front, it's got a leveling kit on it. Uh, this is going to allow for my trailer to sit as level as possible uh, when driving to any of my events, which is really important for um, trailer weight distribution so just make sure I will put a link in the description below on where you can purchase this hitch I've had it for about a year and a half and it's been great so uh, now we'll take a look at the generators in the back of the truck so here are my two generators uh, I will put these in the description below as well if you are interested uh, these are the 4500 watt inverter champion generators. so these generators are absolutely that they've been great um, so the way that they work is both of these are actually 4,500 watts a piece, but I do have a parallel link kit that will connect them together, which will make them 9,000 running watts or 9,000 starting watts, and then about 71 or 72, I believe, running watts, um, which is important. You want to make sure that the watts that you have for your vehicle um, or for what you're powering is going to be enough. So the cool thing about these generators is it does have an easy start switch here. So you, you literally just put it over to the easy start and then you pull the cord. It always starts in my, I mean, there's been one time where it hasn't started on the first pull, but other than that, it started on the first pull. Uh, you have your regular outlets here. You have your um, 120 RV volt here. Uh, it's got your gauge right here. So it looks kind of like an oil can um, right here, but what this is, it's a power meter. So it really lets you know um, how much power you're actually generating from these generators, uh, which has been super nice, especially because um, it just shows you if you're running, uh, let's say you have an electric kettle, you have an espresso machine, you have grinders. Uh, it just lets you know a good gauge of how much battery you're using, 0%, 50%, and 100%. Um, so something to note about these two generators, it's actually a 30 amp, but if you have the parallel link and you're putting them together, uh, it actually is a 50 amp. So um, my trailer is a 50 amp plug-in, so it just makes sense um, parallel linking these together using the 50 amp. And these are just nice and easily portable as opposed to the 9500 watt inverter Predators, um, which are nice, uh, but... The problem with those is it is very, very heavy, especially when you add gas, uh, it gets super, super heavy. So back here, all you see is I have it mounted on the cleats in the back just by a little tight rope here. Um, keeps it all good. Uh, one thing that I will do is just make sure before 
every event that I have enough gas and I also have extra gas cans that I will put um, over here on the side of the truck. So uh, as you can see, it is mounted on the cleat down there and it goes all the way to the other side. They are heavy enough to where it, they're not gonna move when I travel. Um, you always wanna make sure you have some extra cords. Uh, I have another jack right there. I, I, have a, I have a drill that I use, which I will show you in a second, uh, that I use to raise and uh, lower the jack stands on the actual trailer itself. But chucks, make sure that you have them because they need to go on your trailer, especially when your trailer is not attached to your vehicle at an event or even if it's parked uh, outside. So um, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you the drill that I use. So here is the drill that I use. I use a Craftsman's brushless. Um, it's a 4H lithium ion battery. Um, it's been super nice. At least this one is a 3 4 inch uh, drill bit and it's just a nice socket to where it's just super easy to obviously just make the adjustments for my trailer and I don't have to hand crank it because if you don't have a drill, you have to use a handheld like this. Let me get a better view. Um, and this can be a little bit more difficult. Let me get it in focus here. This can be a little bit more difficult to use um, when you're at an event. So I definitely recommend the drill. Um, just make sure you bring extra batteries as right now this one's at one battery, so uh, one bar. Uh, it's got a battery indicator level here. So I will change that out now uh, before I head over to the trailer. So I'm gonna put that in, change the battery out, and I will catch back up to you in my truck. Now we are in the truck and we are driving to the trailer. So um, this is a good time to note if you are looking to own your own mobile business or you probably would already know if you had it, um, the biggest thing to keep in mind is your community uh, regulations, guidelines, I guess you can call it, uh, because we are not allowed to keep our trailer at our house. So we have to either obviously pay for storage. Um, luckily, we had family members who allow us to keep our trailer in their pole barn, uh, which is nice. And we do have an outlet inside of there. So we have electric to where we can keep it pretty much heated and cooled depending on the elements. And we live in the Midwest, so it does get um, really hot and really cold. So today it's about 48 degrees Fahrenheit, um, not super cold. Uh, it's obviously getting colder. It's uh, getting fall now, um, and it will be um, pretty cold here soon. I mean, we get to negative 30 with wind chill at times. So uh, definitely try to make sure that when you do do your trailer build that you do have like a mini split, especially, I mean, even if you just live in like a, uh, a warm area like Florida, um, you obviously want air conditioning because... Um, too cold or too hot does affect your um, espresso equipment and it can be um, a negative impact on the longevity of your equipment so um, just going to be heading over there now it's about a 13 minute drive I will uh, catch back up with you when we get to the pole barn and I'll kind of just show you everything I do to prep there and then uh, bring you back home kind of go over the list that I have of items that I bring for the events and yeah see you at the trailer so we're just pulling in here so we actually have our pop-up trailer uh, with our cart it's actually gonna be over here so I'll bring you guys there first so you can see my smaller trailer that's the mobile trailer that we bring around with the cart and then Come along over here. We're gonna make our way to the pole barn. So here's the pole barn that we keep our trailer. This is always the worst part, um, because yeah, in the summertime and in the wintertime, bugs really like to. Um, come around here and uh, I'm not a fan of spiders and up here at the top 
uh, there's always like a bird's nest. And one time, went to go open this thing up, and an egg fell and hit me on the shoulder. So it was really disgusting. Um, so now I kind of stay on the outside of it, and we kind of open it up. So uh, now we're gonna go take a look at the trailer. Here is the uh, close up of the trailer. So kind of the way that we have it in here right now just sits in this big open space pull barn which is nice uh, it's not heated or cooled but it does keep it out of the element um, here is the 50 amp plug that I was telling you about earlier um, it is plugged into the outlet over there kind of ran over here um, with our mini split unit which has the air conditioning and heat uh, which is really good especially for living in the Midwest where it gets freezing cold and stifling hot so I did ended up changing out the uh, jack to a motorized jack it's just a lot easier um, and the trailer weighs about I would say about 5200 pounds um, rated for about 7,000 it's a dual axle which has 30 uh, 3,500 each uh, pound rating so it's about a 7,000 pound rating and I'm at about 5200 so my truck I believe can pull about 11 to 12 so we're good there on both ends but next thing I'll do is undo this hitch uh, lift it up and then I will show you how I hook it up to the trailer and then we'll make our way inside of the trailer um, for stuff that I do and make sure that it is all good and secured for when we start driving so um, now we're gonna come back down to the hitch so I do have two separate keys um, one for my pop-up unit and one for um, one for my uh, cart and one for my trailer and last time I brought the wrong one so now I just always bring them both and it's just a lot easier. Uh, so that's just the hitch lock here. And then we have our other lock. Just kind of set those off to the side. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring the truck back and then we'll hook it up. So that way this has power and we'll get going. I normally like to get about a couple inches apart um, so that way I can hook up the trailer. Just because this is an electrical jack, so it's got to be plugged into an electrical source via my truck. So now I am able to go ahead and lift this, but uh, before we do that, we are going to release the uh, jacks here at the bottom. So I'll show you how I get that done with my drill. It's just a lot easier to do this and it's a lot less time. Just make sure you get a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six point, as opposed to an eight point so you don't strip the bolt. So I'm gonna do that to all four sides and then I'll meet you back over here by the hitch and we'll hook it all up. So the goal here is to lift it up about a half of an inch to an inch above uh, the ball that's already on the hitch so you can back up and be as accurate as possible so about right there this makes it so much easier all right so we are right over it there which is nice should just sit right on top and lock into place. We're actually going to bring this up. So it's actually got like a little tiny uh, sticker here. It says, do not lift past this point. So we won't. Uh, best thing to do is always cross your chains at the bottom. Uh, you don't want your chains dragging and wearing down um, when you're on the road. It's easier just to go on this side. Sometimes I like to cut corners, but it's harder to get this chain out from that side. So see how they're dangling about an inch, inch and a half off the ground. It's kind of what you want. Got to plug in this cord. This is our power cord. It gives power brakes to your trailer and lights everything up. So like I said, you always just want to make sure this is always locked in. So you feel from the bottom, it is. So you're going to put your locking 
pin or we've actually cut a little hole bigger so we can put an actual lock in um, but now some things to check uh, which is a good thing to get in the habit of so we have it locked into the ball and the hitch uh, the the locking mechanism to hold that ball into place um, hold the trailer in place is activated you have your um, either your pin or a lock um, you also have your e-brake so it's actually attached to um, this right here so if for some reason this disconnects while I'm driving it'll pull this pull the pin off of um, this little unit right here and activate the brake so you don't see your trailer flying ahead of you as you're drive, driving that'd be a pretty scary situation um, so once you have both of these chains on e-brake on everything's locked in power uh, now you're just gonna make your way around the trailer and make sure that everything is good so we're gonna leave that plugged in till the very end just so I can get inside and make sure everything is all good with the trailer so we'll rock around the side and we'll walk in the trailer here and make sure everything is good I honestly can't remember um, how I left it so I guess it'll be a surprise to both of us always move that around because probably a spider that's gonna jump on me or something like I said not a fan of spiders not my favorite you can judge me in the comments I know all right so I will see you inside a couple things that I just want to make sure about uh, I'm sorry if there is an echo I have my mic on but don't know if it's gonna be um, really bad if not so we do have the um, mini split on we keep it at 76 um, it's been 90 to 100 degrees 110 with heat index um, so I will keep that on I'm gonna turn it off when we actually drive um, and then this fan part will come all the way up just want to keep it up there as safe as possible everything connected these are secured so they're not gonna move uh, this is all pretty much in place uh, I do just want to make sure that I do have all of my pumps not plugged in just because you want everything to be depressurized so like your water lines you want to be depressurized when you're driving uh, just because hitting bumps and stuff like that on the road could cause some issues um, especially with us I mean we have to drive back home and on the way back home we can drive like 60 so I don't usually try to drive over 55 but everything seems uh, nice and in order from where I left it the last event so it looks like everything's secured and the only thing that we have to do now is head over I am actually gonna put these on the ground not that they're gonna do anything but it's for when I strap my uh, coffee machine box that I made um, inside the trailer so um, now we're gonna get in the truck and we're gonna head back Okay guys, there's a um, pretty big spider over there, that was kind of gross, um, maybe I can show you, because uh, you know I don't like spiders as I mentioned. So I got that nasty guy right there, it's kind of gross. Doesn't look as big out here, but uh, it was disgusting and I almost touched it. Not fun. Oh yeah, there it is in its natural habitat. Super disgusting. 10 out of 10, do not recommend. All right, so we're just gonna prop this door open. Um, so we're actually, a lot of this stuff normally stays in the trailer. Um, but we're kind of in a transition because we just got done serving um, at a farm show for a three-day event with the other trailer. So we have to kind of move things in and around the trailers. So it does get kind of um, 
it's like a disaster almost if you want to call it that it's a lot going on so I'm going to unlock this window because we're not currently connected to power so um, we're gonna have to have this window open as we're working inside so we have some light what a beautiful day nice and cloudy and about um make sure there's no spiders that come out of this thing i just got pelted with a spider earlier in a video um my boss actually wanted me to keep it on the video but no chance all right so i'm in the trailer right now i'm just kind of moving things over so you guys might not see me for a second um but yeah i'm gonna turn this camera over here And you can watch, um, I'll be coming in and out and mostly due to having to go inside and, you know, transfer everything from the house into the trailer. So this is the part that is uh, a little rough sometimes. I mean, this is the fun things that people don't see um, when we're at an event, you know, it looks so nice, neat, organized, but they don't see the the before and the after the event that takes all the time the preparation so just give me a second my doctor said don't lift over 15 pounds might be about 25 so should be okay so we just bring the tubs in i'll just bring them all in like i said normally they all stay in the trailer but because we did a pop-up event with the other trailer we had to move everything over and then now when we're not using that pop-up cart then that is our storage area i do have i'll give you a look around the trailer as well when we're done we have locking tabs on all of our cabinets because or all of our cabinet doors i should say because if you don't it's gonna just lead to a lot of issues um, when you're driving down the road and Things are going to be flying everywhere. I did install this sh these two shelves. Kind of want to add another one over there. I might do that before our event. So we just have extra supplies in here. Um, we have some pumpkin and chocolate with some chai. So everything has its own thing. This is our electric kettle. Everything's in containers because. I want everything to be as neat and organized as possible. Um, just so that we know where everything's at. Everything's sealed in a container with a layer of foam. So we did pay a little bit more for them, but it just helps keep the bugs out and just makes everything a lot cleaner looking. So it's a win-win for us. All right. The fun part is actually deciding what goes everywhere because I took it all out to do the other event and I just don't really remember where everything went. This is what happens when you injure yourself and you haven't done an event for two months and you switched everything out of its normal place but figure it out. So I'll kind of go through, I guess, and show all of you what's inside everything. This is all of our cups and lids. Kind of come over here so you can see. So we have our hot cups, hot lids, cold cups, cold lids. So the first thing I would do is just make sure that we're stocked up on Everything that we need looks like we're going to need a little bit more cold cups and cold lids. Um, probably won't be serving much cold, but we'll probably still serve quite a bit. Here we actually have, I would recommend not putting shelves into your mobile unit, just be, unless you have them anchored down, which you can. Uh, I just rather have tubs, stackable tubs like this that interlock with each other. So this one is just like an empty tub. Uh, this one's really empty. That one just has a garbage bag in it. This has all of our hoses for our gray water. So when we go and dump them at our facility, we have our first aid kit, our straws, our parallel linking kit here to 
um, pair both of the generators together. So that's all locked up. And this one, the next one, I mean, this is fairly simple. This is simple stuff. It just helps keep organized. This is where all the coffee goes. Um, some of our extra syrups, matcha, chais, electric kettle. And then over here we have uh, our iPad stand for our POS system. We have our specials for our menu. Uh, this one's empty. I can't remember what goes in there. I'm gonna have to really think about that. And then we have our paper towels, our bins, um, just some stickers and an extra uh, bin if we run out of space and we need something to be held. Here is our three base sink. So we have our faucet on a swivel. We have a hand washing sink. Um, and then this actually comes out. You can wash your hands and then put your block comes on top for extra cabinet space place for our machine grinders tamper everything uh, we have our knock box so we knock everything into a garbage that's below our pitcher rinser our drain tray and then we have some if i can get into focus there uh, we have some mats for the syrup so if anything runs leaks it goes doesn't go on the uh, counter even though the countertop is um it's butcher block but it is sealed we have about six coats i recommend doing a lot more than than not uh, we have our bar mat. These will actually come over here when we're serving. My wife or uh, my uh, really good friend will um, put all the drinks on there with all the written orders so I know how to grab where. Um, extra storage for like waters and stuff like that. Um, that's just under sink storage down there. This is our hot water heater. So that's a must. You have to have that in order to operate. We have our refrigerator, uh, it's touch control, keep it at about 40 degrees. And then underneath here is just an extra plug, garbage um, shelving to go outside so you can put some like snacks on the outside where the pop-up window is. And then we have our ice bin, it's a huge ice bin which I recommend going bigger because we have gone to a couple events where we have used all of that ice um, so definitely recommend that this is where our uh, pump is for our sink and our pitcher rinser and then this is also where the um, fresh water tank is so it's built into the actual counter now we actually cut ours in the cabinet and it's actually touching the actual floor um, and then we just took it and put some boards to hold it into place because that when it's filled up that's a I believe it's a 20 gallon tank I think um, that is su I think it's eight or nine pounds per per um, gallon of water so that's super heavy this would actually crack the floor so we put it on the floor and then we just kind of built it around it, um, which is probably the best thing to do. The ice will drip and we put like this uh, kind of nozzle on it and an open and close valve. And then we just bring that and since it's fresh water because it's just water, cold hot water from the ice, we can just drain it outside. So yeah, this is uh, pretty much everything that I do so far to get ready for um, a coffee pop-up event. And then I just have a couple more things like I have to fill the cold cups, cold lids. And then we have to make sure that the tank or the fresh water is filled for the event. So we have plenty of fresh water, um, gas in the, in the generators. And then that's pretty much it. Just get all your supplies. You have a list of everything. Um, but this is pretty much what I do to prep for an event besides go to the grocery store, grab what I need to grab. Normally about 10% of the amount of people that are going to be at the event is what you can account for for how many people you're going to have to serve so um, appreciate you guys following if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up make sure to hit the subscribe button um, to stay tuned to all of our videos that we post here at espresso outlet uh, if you need any kind of commercial equipment make sure to reach out uh, all of us here at espresso outlet would be grateful to be able to assist you so 
Um, stay tuned. We're going to have more videos of working, what it's like to work inside the trailer, workflow videos, um, kind of, I mean, what do I do? What do I shop for? And kind of the stuff that I thought of to put into the trailer, I'll be making separate videos like that as well. So if you guys enjoyed the video, like I said, hit the thumbs up. Appreciate you guys for uh, watching it to the end. If you watch this video to the end, make sure you put in the comments, um, just put Express Wallet is great. So I know that you guys followed the entire video. And until next time, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.